she's got a super classic case of high tone pelvic floor where that whole levator ani is just lifted. And so then, of course, because it can't hold a full ball and do high energy activity, one's got to go. And so it'll be the bowels. And so with her, she sort of came to me three weeks before this Ironman triathlon that she wanted to um, podium at. So it was a bit of a, a drama, like, oh, my God, what am I going to do in three weeks with this woman? Anyway, she actually was very open to the needling. Quite interesting. The one point I would say, she's the only non-medical person I've ever needled in the levator, ain't I? which tells okay. might say a few things about medical professionals hey and um, anyway so she was really open to it because she really wanted it fixed she felt that she didn't run the quickest that she could in the marathon her pace was just a little bit off but she managed to get through the marathon with a not having to stop for a poo which i thought was a win 100 percent um but she did run the whole way feeling like she had one or like she could have one. So anyway, then I had six weeks between that Ironman triathlon and a 60K cross-country ski race, also pretty wild. And so what we did was we did weekly treatments, loads of release work. We needled her. We did tweak her, um, her, her fueling strategies a little bit. I, you know, I worked with her dietitian to see if we couldn't get something better pre, post, et cetera, et cetera. And then on the cross-country ski, which took her six hours, she didn't feel like she wanted to poo. She didn't have to poo. And she felt like she'd had a full clear out before. And there was no urinary leakage. But because skiing is not quite as heavy as running, we weren't really sure if it was that. Um, and then I had a few more, few more weeks before she was doing something else. And it basically just consisted of high-end trigger point release, um, hold relax techniques, PNFs, needling, anything I could do to release that floor. Now, really if, interestingly, she's obviously not a, a normal case of emotional anxiety relating to the floor. But when we high level energy sprinting, we've got that adrenaline, we've got our fight or flight going, and we are actually quite emotional. And it was it, it's it's interesting with the pelvic floor because when you're treating them, we're obviously chatting about daily things, and you can you can tell as you're treating if somebody's daily thing flares their floor, like my mother-in-law, or you know, oh my gosh, the husband who won't take out the laundry or whatever like that. And she was really interesting until she started talking about her sprint session, and she almost squeezed my finger to a pulp. And so so then we started working with her sports psychologist to try and overcome this fear that she has that she's going to poop at high at, at high speeds so it's actually been a really lovely situation because I've been dealing with um, the dietitian the sports psychologist and myself to try and conquer all of these things and she's now on a period of two months training because she's Swedish so she goes home to Sweden and but I keep getting these weekly updates from her and she's going well now obviously because we couldn't do treatment on her I sent her with a thera wand which is the most amazing piece of equipment it looks like a little s and so it has a short handle and a long handle you hold the long handle if you want to do the short work you hold the short work if you want to do the long work and and, and I teach them how to trigger point and release their own flaws so that they can do a little bit of stuff helping at home. And we started that almost immediately with her because I knew I had this gap in, in over the summer and I wanted her to be as proficient as she could be.